Jefferson, Madison, all the founders, imperfect men, understood one thing, that to have democracy, people had to be informed. Well, the structures by which we inform citizens are collapsing. Our television news is a, is a disaster in most circumstances. Radio, it has just collapsed. 20,000 on-air personalities lost over the last 15 years since the telecom bill consolidation. But you, the concept was you always still had the big daily newspaper, that newsroom that sent reporters out to cover not just the sexy story, but the dull story, the complex story, the one that took time and resources. Well, in the last two years, every month, American newspapers have laid off more than 1,000 employees. In addition to the reporters going down, whole newspapers are closing. Uh, papers in Seattle, in Albuquerque, in Tucson, in uh, Denver, shutting down. Uh, many communities in this country no longer have mm. a daily newspaper that even tries to cover them. At the founding of the American Republic, uh, Jefferson, Madison, the others, uh, people who we reference so often in, in talking about this country, again, imperfect men who, who made a lot of mistakes, but they had the wonderful opportunity to ask a question. How do we shape a new kind of country where the people are informed enough mm. to make the decisions kings used to make? They answered that question by saying, we can't throw it to the market. We can't you know, wait till something develops. We have to make sure that we establish a system that allows people to very quickly and easily start a media outlet, in those cases a newspaper, and to get it distributed. They created massive postal subsidies, and they linked them in many cases to printing subsidies. These were multipartisan. They supported different ideology. You have to understand journalism as a public good, not as something that we can only get as much of as we somehow can figure out how to pay for. To do journalism requires compensation, requires human labor that has to be compensated, requires fact checkers, copy editors, competition with other newsrooms. So if someone misses a story, they're called on it and accountable for it, and someone else gets it. All these things require a great deal of resources, and the evidence is really plain to see. We go through it in chapter two. We go through all the great ventures being done, the most exciting stuff. The resources aren't there, and there's no way they're coming on the horizon unless we do something dramatic. In the book, we outline a, a whole bunch of, of scenarios and ideas. We don't say there's a one-size-fits-all solution. But uh, to give you a good example, a simple, right now, shovel-ready, if you will, model. Let's start a News AmeriCorps. The AmeriCorps program, which puts teachers into neighborhoods, particularly underserved neighborhoods across this country, uh, works. There's a lot, of, a lot of good marks for it. Uh, why not say to thousands of young journalists, yeah, go do it. Start websites, work with community radio stations, not-for-profit. All of our plans are to beef up commercial, not-for-profit media. Non -commercial. And speaking of that, non-commercial, mm -hmm. not-for-profit. And speaking of that, uh, let's supercharge funding for public broadcasting and for community radio, community television across this country. Let's get real resources in there. It is an embarrassment mm. that the United States of America pays a dollar for public media compared to 30 or 40 dollars paid by almost any country that we consider our equal in the world. And uh, what's interesting we discovered was that if you look at the countries that have actually instituted major public funding for journalism, for competing newspapers, or for public media in Europe, uh, that you find that those countries actually, the greater the subsidies, the more adversarial the journalism is. It's, it's quite the opposite because you have a broader range of viewpoints and they feel that they're more enabled to take on those in power.